Okay, we said what do the sisters want the most? What do the sisters want the most? Who can tell me? To feel loved. To feel that love. To feel cherishment. They need to be constantly reassured that their husbands love them. That their husbands always take them as number one. Always. If women could get away with it, they want to, want to be put on the pedestal and the husband just looks at them all day and night and that would be great for them. Right? They want to be number one in their husband's lives. So they want constant reassurance that the husband always loves them. Now, brothers, listen to this. Wives, do not take your love for granted. You take your wives' loves for granted. You don't need your wife to constantly reassure you that you love me, you love me. No, you take it for granted. The fact that she's still living with you shows you she loves you. Well, it doesn't work the other way around. It does not work the other way around. A woman is always double guessing. Does he still love me? Does he still think about me? Does he still care about me? Does he still put me number one? And therefore, a woman has to have constant reassurance. And not only this, but another issue that men need to be sensitive to and understand. Women are very conscious of their looks and they're comparing their looks with other women all the time. We guys don't do that. We don't care about other looks of men and we don't compare ourselves. But women are always thinking, am I still beautiful enough for him? Does he still think me attractive? Maybe I've gained a few pounds, maybe after the third kid, this and that. She's always double guessing her looks, her figure. And so the husband always has to make her feel the most beautiful, the most cherished, the most loved, the most admired. Though She always wants these reassurances. How does he do this? Many ways. And again, time is limited. I'll just point out a number of them. Number one, words, words, words. Never underestimate the power of speech. Simply saying, I love you. I know it's awkward for men after the courting phrase. I know it's awkward, right? But believe me, it never goes out of fashion. For women, it never goes out of fashion. They always love to hear this phrase. And in fact, there are da'if hadith of our Prophet It's a bit da'if hadith, but it's still mentioned in our books that our Prophet and Aisha were joking once. And Aisha said to the Prophet How much do you love me? How is your love for me? And our Prophet said, and he gave a beautiful, metaphorical, poetic expression. He said, my love for you is like the tight knot that cannot be unbound. My love for you is like the tight knot that cannot be unbound. So then in the future, sometimes if they would have a bit of an issue, a bit of an argument, one of the two would remark, how is the knot right now? How is the knot right now? And Aisha would say this when the Prophet sometimes got irritated. How is the knot? So he would smile, he would say, as strong as it ever was. Right? And this hadith is in Dara Qutni. Now the point being that the words I love you are something very important, but not just I love you, praising her and what she does. Husbands, never take your wife's actions for granted. Suppose she is cooking and cleaning most of the time. Not that I'm suggesting that should be done. Work should always be 50-50. Wives cook and husbands eat. No, no, don't give me. Work should always be 50-50. Don't, don't, don't misquote me there. But I'm, not, I'm, I'm just saying, suppose she cooks and suppose she cleans, right? Never take it for granted. Always, once in a while, come and compliment her. MashaAllah, that was great. You know, I really appreciate what you're doing for me. Those words, they go a long way. Your wife realizes, you know what? He's not taking me for granted. Very important. Praise her looks when she dresses up, when she does something extra special for you. Never take it for granted. Husbands, you all know the big danger of forgetting anniversaries, right? You all know how dangerous that is. Why do women want you to know their anniversaries? Because it makes them feel you still love them makes them feel he still remembers me, he still cherishes me. And celebrating anniversaries, honestly, I believe there are some scholars, they say it's haram bid'ah. Subhanallah, quote me, celebrating anniversaries is mustahab. It is encouraged in our religion. What greater thing to do than for the husband to tell his wife over and over again that I love you, I'll do it all over again. Take them out for a romantic dinner. Be romantic with your wife. What better way of showing that love? There's nothing wrong at all to, to show that love on your anniversary days. This is something that the shari encourages the husband and wife to have that lovely bond together. Another thing that the woman wants is time. And time, this is now a difference in language. For husbands, time means the watch on your hand. So when the wife says, you never spend time with me, 
Immediately he goes into calculation mode. I sleep eight hours in a day. I have breakfast one hour. I come home. That's 10 hours with you. How can you say I never have time for you? Right? Because he's thinking of time in the dictionary definition of time. That's the clock. No, 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 no. Women have a different dictionary. Women have a different vocabulary. For women, time means attention. Undivided quality attention. So, you're working five days of the week. You have that Saturday night free. And you want to go and you want to watch a television match. You want to watch a cricket game. You want to go and play some basketball. You want to do this and that. That is quality time. And you have just shown your wife, when you have quality time, you don't want to spend it with her. So what does that mean? You never go out with the guys? No, of course you have to go out with the guys. But understand, when she's asking for time, she wants quality time. And this also when she comes to you to help, to come for advice. She wants some issue to solve. One of the biggest problems that men have is they think as if the, women, the woman is coming to him to solve her problem. So immediately he'll say, oh, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you should do this, you should do that. And that is not what the woman wants. What does the woman want? The woman wants a, the woman wants a loving ear, a sympathetic ear. She wants somebody to listen to her problem, to be sympathetic to her, not necessarily to solve her problem. This is quality time. To express that whatever she went through was frustrating, was problematic, and inshallah, they will work it out. And of course, much more can be said, but uh, again, time is of the essence. The bottom line, brothers and sisters, the bottom line, marriage is something that both sides have to give and take. Men have to give or else the women will take. No, no, again, both sides have to give and take. You have to give what the woman wants, and in return, she will give what you want. When the man gives love, when the man gives that, what we call romance, and romance is nothing. Men, men think romance is a very dangerous word. They never want to use it, right? All romance means is you show her you're thinking about her. You show her you're caring about her. Husbands, the phrase I love you, giving roses, remembering the, the anniversaries, taking them out, spending quality time. This is what romance is. When you give the wife the love, you make her feel like she's number one. Guess what? She'll make you feel like you're number one. And so the both of you make each other feel like number one. And that's exactly what marriage is all about. Marriage is a team effort. Both efforts put in the part, the, the, both parties put in the effort. And then and only then will the marriage be successful. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.